Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the top five mistakes after a total knee replacement. I want to make mistakes, Brad. I do not have five mistakes that I usually make. <laughs> we're not. I probably made five this morning. <laughs> so we're not talking about surgeon mistakes, we're talking about patient mistakes. Right. Okay. 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 So mistakes. what's what's your number one, Paul? Number one mistake people make when they're getting getting a total knee replacement. I think the number one mistake is not having a plan for post-op. All right, okay. so you come in, you have your knee replacement, and then discharge planner comes to talk to you, and you're like, well, I got no plan. I Which live. is on day one a lot of times nowadays, or some hospitals yeah, the same often day. Yeah, often same day, or the next day you're going yep. home, you have no plan in place for how you're gonna manage after this surgery. Okay, but the patient says, well, listen, I'm just gonna go home and I'm just gonna sit in bed. Why do I need a plan? You need a plan, because you can't just sit in bed. You're gonna okay. have to get up, move around. How are you gonna get your food? Are you gonna have anyone there helping you? Yep. How are you gonna get to and fro because you can't drive right away? To and fro. To and fro. <laughs> to and fro. I borrowed that from a 1930s an Mark old, Twain book. An old English book. <laughs> so the plan needs to be, yeah, who's gonna be there to help you, where you're gonna be, how are you gonna get back and forth or to and fro. So I think we both think that's critical. And do that ahead of time, sometimes weeks or months. We have lots of patients who are older, they've had their kids come in from out of town or whatever, maybe you move in with someone for a week, maybe you go to respite care, lots of options, but you need to have them in place before you go home. Have a plan. Okay, that's number one. Number two for me, and I see this all the time and it makes me crazy, is not taking enough pain medication. Right. You got to take pain medication. Yes. As we've said in other videos, and as your surgeon has certainly told you, you are going to have pain after your knee replacement. That's just the way it is. And we are sorry for that. Sorry. I sorry feel for, bad, for causing but that. It's true. It's painful procedures. So you have to have your pain medication on board almost on a regular basis for the first while. For sure, and nowadays we are very, very sensitive, um, accurately so, for the risks of narcotics. Um, however, it is a critical and necessary part because what happens, so people come at two weeks, Paul, and you've given them say 100 of something and they should come back with 90 of something. What does their leg and what does their performance usually look like when they have yeah, not taken any pills? They've gone to physio and they haven't been able to do their physio because they're in too much pain. Right. And the pain does, meds don't necessarily have to be narcotic. There's also anti-inflammatories that are given. There's also acetaminophen that's often used. So there's a variety of pain medications. We often use a multimodal yes. pain medication. Check out our video on multimodal pain yep. medication. There is, may include a topical, but whatever. You wanna keep taking your pain medication regularly. And remember, we always say, it's easier to keep pain away than it is to get rid of pain once it comes. Yeah. Right? I think that's a very it's like good point. unwanted guests at your house. Right? Lock the door it's before they come. Easier to keep them away than to get rid of them once they're here. I think that's a very good point. And, and we've said this before as well, when you're taking narcotics or heavy duty medication for an appropriate reason, under supervision, the odds of acquiring an addiction or developing an addiction of some sort is very, very rare. So it's all supervised and we are cognizant of that. So I think it's really important to, to make your, your goal to be to reduce your pain so that you can get your range. Because same thing with, with getting rid of it. If you get a stiff knee, it is very hard to get your knee unstiff or to loosen it up. We want to prevent the stiff knee and the number one way to do that is by pain control. Yeah, that cycle is I've got a lot of Vicious. pain, so I don't want to bend my knee because it hurts. Now my knee hurts because it's stiff and I don't bend it and I don't want to bend it because it hurts. It's a vicious cycle. So you got to break that cycle, break that pain cycle so that you can. Or in, in Australia, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise. Right. Right. For our down south viewers. Depending on what side of the equator you're on, basically you want to break that pain cycle so that you can achieve a good range of motion in your knee. Okay, that's two. What's number three? Number three is doing too much too soon after. Okay? okay. And that includes engaging in sort of high risk activity. Okay, I'm a week post op, seems like a good day to go out and shovel the snow. No. You might be able to do it, you might be strong enough, comfortable enough. However, your reaction time is not going to be as good if you step on some ice. It doesn't have to be ice, it can be wet ground at home, around the shower, something like that. You engage in high risk activity where you're at risk for falling or you're doing too much. You're feeling okay, so you're doing the stairs 50 times a day. Yep. So is it possible to do too much? Yeah, it's possible to do too much in the first while because those tissues that have 
ha undergone surgery have to heal. Yeah, and, and you want to you wanna push yourself for sure. But yes, if you get to severe pain or severe swelling, or you get so sore that you feel unstable, because sometimes as your muscles get tired or get sore, they're going to be um, unstable and could potentially cause you to fall. So yeah, when you're on the, if you're walking on a treadmill, we don't want you to set it to seven. We don't probably want you on the elliptical early on. Things where you can fall, we want to try to avoid in general. Yeah, because you're, we're going to give those soft tissues a chance to heal and we don't want you to have a fall and you gotta, fracture. You got to walk before you run. Okay. okay, so that's three. Number four is kind of opposite of that. It's, and for me, it's, it's not doing prehab. We're not doing enough before. So doing too much after and then now not doing it enough before. Right. Prehab. We've talked about prehab before. What, Part, is, what is prehab? Prehab is hab that you do pre. No, it's actually, <laughs> that's a Latin lesson. <laughs> it's, it's, it's doing your physiotherapy, starting your physiotherapy before you replace it. Replace it. And we say physiotherapy in uh, Canada. In the States, I think they say it's slightly different in the U.S. Not yes. physiotherapy. Physical therapy. Physical therapy. Yeah, so yeah. one of the comments is they're yeah. making yeah. fun Thank of us a little bit. Thank you for educating us. For your, so prehab includes starting your physical therapy before the surgery so that you're attuned to it when it comes time to do it after and it's not a surprise it's like studying for an exam i like that you don't want to be learning new stuff on the exam. i think the other reason too is because then you're stronger you maybe have better range of motion particularly for knees and you might be stronger plus you know what to expect so while you're suffering in pain you're not trying to learn a new yeah. skill i yeah. think i think that's a great one uh, so that's number four number five for me and this is a little tricky because everybody's lives are a little bit different is is going back to work too soon um, typically yeah. we tell people 8 to 12 weeks and often I encourage people to take the full 12 because you know what, get one good crack at a joint replacement and we want you to be as successful as possible. We recognize however that some people have to go back to work, self-employed, don't have benefits that are going to pay you to be off work so we recognize that and sometimes you can't control it but if you can in general yeah. we want your job to be your joint replacement. That's right, I mean you deserve a break right, you've had bad arthritis in your knee for a long time undergone surgery take a little break after and let yourself heal and recover yes Brad's right sometimes people have to go to work right yeah. away if you do try and go back with light duties try yes. and try and modify your modified work. hours even modified hours yeah you know what I mean do something where it's not you're not going back full tilt too soon yeah because for me I want your your new job is your joint replacement if you that's have a knee it. your new job yeah. is your total knee yeah that's your new favorite that's it that's your new job punch in on that clock Okay, so let's review. Top five mistakes or troubles people have after total joint replacement? You better go because I forgot them already. Okay, so particularly total knee. So number one? You went back to work too soon. Back to work too soon. Number two, didn't have a plan. Number three, engaged in high risk activity that puts you at risk for falling or fracture or doing too much so you're not letting the tissues heal. Number four, didn't take enough pain medication? Gotta take enough pain medication. Number five? Number five. Didn't do your prehab. That was it. Prehab. See, I forgot prehab already. Uh, all right. So you got to do uh, it. You got to study for that exam. Yes. So um, a good summary. Please adhere to these sentiments and, and do them to increase your chances of success. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.